Valence electrons. Do you know? Can anyone tell me? How do you calculate the number of valence electrons of a molecule? Total number of valence electrons. Yeah. So you look at the elements, right? And find out the individual uh, the number and the valence electrons of the individual atoms. Add them together. Yeah? So tell me, if I give you a phosphoric acid, H3PO4, what are the, uh, how many numbers of valence electrons, total number of valence electrons? You know? Yeah? Anyone? Yes? Can you repeat Eight? the question? Huh? How many? Can you repeat the question? What, what is the total number of valence electrons in phosphoric acid, for example? H3PO4. I got 32. Yeah, that's right. That is right. And that is correct. That is absolutely right. So, and uh, for the Lewis dot structure, what Wait. can you get? Wait, I yes. have a question because I know that she said she got 32. So is it pretty much what, um, like for oxygen, it's six valence electrons, so you'll multiply by four because it's four oxygens? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Welcome. And what can you learn about the structure of the molecule from Lewis dot structure? What, what can you learn from the Lewis dot structure? Two dimensional, three dimensional, four dimensional? Whatever structure do you know, we can get from the Lewis dot structure. It's two dimensional, right? Two dimensional, yeah, it is right. And uh, and which model should you use to get the three dimensional structure? Vesper. Yep, that is correct. Vesper model, absolutely right. And so, so yes, please remember and remember the Vesper model when you have a export type. And then you have a four electron cloud, they have to stay away from each other as far as they can. So if you have a molecule with AX4 type, AX4 type, then what type of structure can you expect? AX4 type, A is the central atom, X are the surrounding atoms. Textic fracture, right? Tetrahedral, and what's the bond angle? 109.5. That is absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Yeah. How about X3 type? What 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 kind of structure can you expect? A X3 type. The angle? Uh, the, the, the structure first structure and then the, then the angle. Yes. Triangular planar. Triangular planar. At what angle? One twenty. Yeah, you can expect 120, but most cases it's a little less, right? Because of the pi bonds or et cetera, et cetera, or something like that. Yeah, sure, 120. How about X2 type? What's the X, a, a, a X2 type uh, type of molecules? What kind of structure can you expect? Linear. 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 One angle? 180. Always 180. That is correct. So if you have a water molecule, H2O, is it a linear, tetrahedral, triangular planar? Tetrahedral. It's a tetrahedral, and why? Um, the the lone pairs. Yeah, two pairs of lone pairs. So four electron clouds. H O H O two of them bonds, and then two lone pairs. That is correct. How about ammonia N S three? Is it a triangular planar or tetrahedral? It's a modified tetrahedral. Yeah, sure. And the bond angle is 107, all right. And why the bond angle is less? Because the repulsive effect of the lone pair. So same as the water molecule too. Now, some of the elements, some of the elements in the period three, they don't obey the octet rule. Do you know what are those? What are those elements? They do not obey the octet rule. They have octet rule, they can have more than eight electrons in the outer shell. Who are, who are those? Period three elements. And what are who are they? Phosphorus. Uh, yeah, one of them. And sulfur. Yeah, one of them. 
and chlorine. Yes, that is correct. And why do they do that? Why do they keep the electrons, extra electrons? In the D subshell. 3D, 3D. Third period, yeah, third period elements, 3D. Yeah, that's correct. That is absolutely right. Oh, very good. All right, so this kind of thing that you can expect, right? So now if I give you a molecule, let's say CH3OCH3, it's a dimethyl ether. Everybody okay? So dimethyl ether, CH3OCH3. Write it down and tell me what are the structures of carbon number one, oxygen, and carbon number two? Can you repeat what those two were really quick? So the molecule is dimethyl ether, CH3OCH3. Thank you. Then asking the question, what are the three-dimensional structures of carbon number one, carbon number two, and the oxygen? Are they all tetrahedral because of the two lone pairs? Yeah, very good. Excellent. Excellent. I appreciate you. Yes, that's right. All three of them are tetrahedral. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Now, then we talked about the states of the matter, right? Usually, most of the molecular compounds, they have three different states. Uh, gases, liquids, and solids. What's the difference between these three different states? What are the differences between these three different states at the molecular level? In gaseous states, yes, yes? I was going to say the difference between carbons, right? No, 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 no. In general, all molecular compounds, most of the molecular compounds are gases in the lower molecular way. So gases, liquids, and solids only three different states are possible. So the question is, uh, wh what are the differences between these three different states of the of the matter, of the molecular compounds? Solids are a lot more dense and gases are looser and can move a lot more. So basically what you're saying that in gases, molecules are widely distributed each other. They're not touching each other. They're separated from each other. Yeah. And in, in liquid, they are touching each other right and and in solid they're compact that they are really tightly held together that is correct that is correct so now what type of forces operating there to to have this kind of interactions whatever forces uh, yes intermolecular forces Intermolecular forces. How many intermolecular forces do you know? Three. What are they? London dispersion force, hydrogen bonding, uh -huh. and covalent. No, no. covalent is strong bond. Covalent oh, is strong bond. Uh, dipole dipole. Dipole dipole interactions. That is correct. And London dispersion force, what is the origin of London dispersion force? origin of London dispersal force. All three of them will have to it, but what's the origin of London dispersal force? They are, they are for non-polar molecules. They're induced dipole, induced dipole interactions. And dipole, dipole, the two different poles, delta positive, delta negative of the molecule, so they cluster together, they interact together. And hydrogen bonding is only applied to the oxygen and nitrogen with the hydrogen uh, donor. Oxygen, 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 nitrogen is an acceptor, and hydrogen from anywhere is a donor, right? So that's a hydrogen bonding, that's a difference. And um, uh, London dispersion force depends upon how many factors? What are the factors contribute to the London dispersion force? In other words, um, that size and shape. It depends on the, yes, molecular is a non-polar, first thing first is a non-polar molecule. That depends on the molecular weight, size, and shape. That is correct. So some molecule could have a linear structure for a cylindrical structure, and the same molecule might have a molecular weight is the same, but it's a spherical structure. So as a surface area, 
is more, then you have more London dispersion force. And how to determine the London dispersion force? What's the parameter we use to calculate, to determine the London dispersion force? It's a boiling point. Yeah, that is absolutely right. That is correct. That is correct. And as you probably know, when you, when you convert a liquid gas solid to gas, basically we can, the temperature, pressure, they contribute uh, to their conversion from one to another. Perfect. That is correct. Yes? Can you repeat what the answer was again? Uh, uh, which one? The, uh, which one? Uh, the, 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 the factors contributing to the London dispersion force is the molecular weight, shape, and size. And if you, if you have two molecules, so the same molecular weight, but their shapes, but the sizes could be different, shapes are different. One could be linear, one could be cylindrical, and one could be spherical. Then the, then the one which is cylindrical have a more surface area compared to the spherical one. And therefore, the first one has a higher LDF. And LDF is determined by the boiling point, the boiling point. Boiling point is the measurement or the parameter used to determine the strength of the London dispersion force. Now, among these three weak forces, can you arrange them in order of the increasing to the decrease in the uh, st strongest to the weakest? Can you arrange them? Which one is the strongest? Hydrogen is the strongest, dipole, dipole is the strongest, London, London dispersion forces are the weakest. Yeah, very good. Excellent question, excellent answer. All right, that's, that's, uh, that's very nice. All right, so then uh, then if I ask you, for example, what, water is a liquid and hydrogen sulfide H2S, H2O is a liquid and H2S is a gas, explain why. And I'll give the electronegativity of oxygen is 3.5, hydrogen is 2.1, sulfur is 2.5. Those are given to you. So how how to explain the water H2O is a liquid, whereas H2S is a gas? Um, is it because hydrogen has so many hydrogen bonds? Um, Even water. Yeah, water. Yeah. 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 water has hydrogen bonds. Yes, very good. Um, and so because and then also water is polar, and so because it's hydrogen bonds, it has. It's stronger, and um, H2S is nonpolar, so it uses London dispersion, which is weaker. That is very good. So basically, what do you call it sulfur again? H2. Oh, go ahead. Explain to her. Go ahead. Um. So H2S is nonpolar, and so it's uh, bonded through London dispersion force, which is weaker than hydrogen bonds. So it's a gas. And H2O, H2O has a more polar molecule, so it is a network type of hydrogen bonding. Therefore, molecules are stuck together, and that's why a high boiling point is very high, 100 degrees Celsius. That is correct. That is correct. Any questions? And you already know how to calculate the, the how to determine whether the molecule is a polar or non-polar. If I give you the electronegative values, tell me the the, the the table that I give it to you. How do you determine the the whether molecule has a polar bond or non-polar bond. You have subtracted from uh, like uh, Yeah, explain. Uh, go, go for a minute, so explain. Okay, so like, let's say like the center um, from the top of the bond, you subtract the electronegativity between the two elements and uh -huh. see like how much it is and if it's um, lower than 0 0.5, then it's nonpolar. If it's above that, to uh, think 1.9, so, uh, it's polar. That is correct. It's polar. So if it's only if it's a polar bond in the mist, then the whole thing is polar. Yeah, so greater than 1.9 is ionic. That's correct. That's correct. But how about uh, the geometry? The geometry of the molecule can also play an important role, right? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. For example, carbon dioxide is a polar or non-polar? It's it's non it's non-polar. Why why is that? Because um, it's even on each side. 
So it's carbons in the middle and then oxygen and oxygen is even and the forces cancel out. Yeah, and same as the carbon tetrachloride, CCL4, right? Chlorine has 3.0, carbon is 2.5. Yeah, the same reason, because they are all four angles in a symmetrical position. Therefore, there is no residual force in the carbon atom, central carbon atom. Therefore, it is non-polar. That's correct. Very good. Very good. Now, then, then we are done with the polarity and all those things. Solubility. We did the uh, solubility. We will talk about solubility more. So, what uh, what can you tell about the solubility of molecular compounds? Solubility of molecular compounds. Yes. Solubility of molecular compounds. So you have a solute plus solvent, which is a major component, solute is the minor component, equals solution. If they uh, make a solution, that means they are uh, soluble. If they do not make a solution, they are, um, uh, they are insoluble. The solute is insoluble. What can you tell about it? What are the uh, Yeah, go ahead. Like solutes dissolve like solvents. Meaning? So like if you have a polar solute, it's going to dissolve a polar solvent. Yep. And? Yep. Yeah. And? Non-polar solute? It'll dissolve a non-polar solvent. That is correct. Like dissolves like. And if you have any 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 other combination, polar solute, non-polar solvent, uh, poly, polar solvent, non-polar solute, they will not mix. That is correct. That is absolutely right. That is correct. All there will be 40 questions. All right. Yes, uh, that, that that is absolutely right. So uh, so 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 then we went to the hydrocarbons, right? Hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons is hydrogen and carbon compounds. What are the different types of hydrocarbons? Do you know how many hydrocarbons are there? There's um, unsaturated and saturated. So uh, hydrocarbons could be linear or cyclic, right? Right? Yes, right. Yeah, and in both cases, they could be three different types. What are they? Yes? Alkenes, 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 alkenes. Yeah, what's the general formula of alkanes? A N E S, alkanes. General formula of alkanes. C N H 2 N plus 2. That is correct. And we, we derive the alkyl groups from the alkane. What's the general formula of alkyl groups? CN H2N plus one. That is correct. That is absolutely right. So if N equal one, which what are the name of the molecule? N equal two, three, four. So N equal one is a methane, CH4, right? And therefore the methyl group, CH3. N equal two, CH3, CH3, ethane. So ethyl group, CH3CH2 dash. Prop propane, CH3CH2, CH3. And then again, the CH3CH2, CH2 is a prop propyl group. What's the formula of isopropyl group? What's the formula of isopropyl group? Uh, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Um, isopropyl. Say it one more time, please. CH3, CH, CH3. Or CH3 whole twice CH dash. That's isopropyl group. Iso. And what's the tertiary butyl group? Can you say that one more time. So isopropyl group is a CH3 whole twice CH dash. That's isopropyl group. And what's the tertiary butyl group? Tributyl, tertiary butyl. What's the formula of tertiary butyl group? Tributyl.
yes tertiary butyl means four carbon so ch3 hole 3 c dash ch3 hole 3 dash CH3 whole 3 C dash. That's a that's a butyl. What's the general formula of cyclic um, uh, hydrocarbons? What are the general formulas? There are quite a few. Yes. Before I go that, what general formula of uh, alkenes? We got alkenes. What's the general formula of alkenes? ENAS. C and H two N, H two N, C and H two N, and how about the alkynes with the triple bond? Alkenes the double bond. Alkynes the triple bond. Alkynes. C and H two N minus two. That is correct. How about a cyclic alkenes, alkenes and alkynes? General formulas. Uh, C A C and H two N. Alkanes, cyclic alkanes. Alkanes. C and H two N minus two. Alkanes. And C N H two N minus four. Right. Very good. Excellent. What What are the general formulas of uh, alkanes, alcohols? Ethers, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, and amines. What's the general formula of alkanes? General formula with R group together. So RH, remember R is the CNH2 and plus 1. So if you add 1H, R uh, CNH2 and plus 2. So RH is the carbohydrate uh, hydrocarbons. What's the general formula of alcohols? General formulas of alcohols with R group. R O H. That is correct. That's a general formula. But how many types of alcohols do you have? Do you know? Three. And what's the general formula of three? All three of them. So R C H two O H is a primary. R R one C H O H secondary. R R one R two C O H is a tertiary. What's the general formula of aldehydes and ketones? General formula of aldehydes and ketones? Yes. General formula of alcohols is R C H two O H, R R one C H O H, R R one R two C O H. That's a primary, secondary, and tertiary. What's the general formula of aldehydes? General formula of RCHO ketones. Ketones. RCOR. Yep. RCOR, RCOR1. Fine. Uh, carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids. COOH. Yep. Amines. R and H2. That's a primary. Secondary? Uh, R and H, R1. Mm -hmm. Tertiary? R and R1, R2. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. And what's the commonality is, or what's the commonality between aldehyde, ketone, and carboxylic acid? They were one common group. What is that? Carboxyl. Carbonyl, not carboxyl, carbonyl, N-Y-L, carbonyl. It's written like a greater than sign, C-O-O. Can you, repeat, can you repeat the question that you asked? What is the common group present in aldehyde, ketone, and carboxylic acids? Yes? Carbonyl have, group. Yes? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you said this. I may have missed it. Um, but are, do we need to know the general formula of carboxylic acids and how they are like formed through aldehydes being oxidized? Sure. Yes, I'm going to talk about very soon. Uh, give me a oh, minute. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah. So this uh, so in the carbonyl group, carbon is a delta positive because carbon is 2.5, oxygen is 3.5, and therefore it's a nucleophilic center. So the nucleophile negative charge uh, OH minus, for example, can attack, and it opens up from triangular planar to tetrahedral structure. Remember that we have talked about sugars, right? Aldehydes and ketones making cyclic compounds, uh, very similar to that, right? And alcohols are polar compounds, of course. Now, uh, how about the solubility? Can you tell me the solubility of alcohols? If the carbon number increases, like a CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2 goes like this way, and what's the cutoff point? What does it become a solid? Liquid to solid. All alcohols are liquid, of course. Aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, that means they're all alcohol liquids because they have a uh, molecular molecular interactions, dipole dipole, inter uh, dipole dipole interactions. So alcohols, when the carbon number increases, what happened? It becomes insoluble. Why? Is it because the polar end is not strong enough to keep the hydrophobic end in water? That is correct. So basically they are fighting with the hydrophobic end and hydrophilic end. Hydrophilic is the OH, it's constant. If the hydrophobic end increases, the solubility decreases. Because hydrophobic means it hates water. Therefore, ultimately once the carbon number seven and above, they become insoluble. That is correct. That is absolutely right. So in, the alcohol, in all those alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, I mean, they're all polar molecules. And they are liquid. Can you tell me why they're liquid? Why they're liquid and why they're soluble in water? They are liquid because they have a molecular molecular interaction, so dipole dipole interactions. Remember the delta positive, delta negative, so they can interact the molecular molecular interaction. Liquid means the molecules are touching each other. How? Dipole dipole interactions, now they can stack together. And why they are soluble? Because they make the hydrogen bonds, the water molecule, hydrogen bonding with the water molecule. All right? All right. Then we talked about someone asked a very good point. How do you convert from alkane to alcohol to aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids? Through the oxidation, limited oxidation within the presence of catalyst. If you take the alkane, it will be oxidized to alcohols. Alcohols will be oxidized to aldehydes or ketones. Primary alcohols are oxidized to aldehydes. Secondary alcohols are oxidized to ketones. And aldehydes are further oxidized to carboxylic acids. Ketones are resistant to oxidation. They could not, be, could not be oxidized. Likewise, tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized either, right? All right. Now, next to the reactions we talked about. Carboxylic acids plus, if we heat the carboxylic acid, what do you get? If we heat the carboxylic acids, what molecule do you get? What molecule do you get? Acid anhydrides, acid anhydrides. Similarly, if you heat the alcohol, you get the ethers, you get the ethers, right? Now, carboxylic acids plus alcohol, what compound do you get? And what's the general formula of that compound? Um, don't you get esters in water and then the formula of an ester yep. is RCOOR1? Yes. Yes, absolutely right. So that means the hydroxyl group uh, from the H for proton from the carboxylic acid and hydroxyl group from the S from the alcohol make the water molecule and rest of them combine to a, a ester. How about carboxylic acids plus amine? What do you get? What's the general formula? Carboxylic acids plus amines. What do you get? Amide. Amine Amide. in water. Amide in water. Amide in water. And what's the general formula of amide? R C O N H2 for the primary, N H R for the secondary, and tertiary doesn't make amide because it doesn't have a hydrogen. All right? 
All right. And how do you name the esters? Can you name an ester or can you name an amine? Can you give a amide? Am am can you name an amide? Formamide. Formamide. And what's the formula? H C O N H two. How about so if we substitute that hydrogen with the methyl group, ethyl group, then the names will be different, right? N methyl or N ethyl, N methyl, formamide, N methyl, N ethyl, N methyl, acetamide, etc., etc. Yes, that is correct. All right. What are the uh, cyclic uh, what are the cyclic compounds possible among the list? Ether uh, alcohols, ethers, amides, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. Among the list of these molecules, what type of cyclic compounds are possible? Um, isn't there cyclic alcohols, ethers, ketones, and Secondary cyclic alcohols are possible. Ethers are possible. What else? Yes. Ketones are possible. LDRs are not possible. Carboxylic acids are not possible. Only secondary amines are possible. Right? Yes or no? Yes? Now. Did you just say right. secondary amines are possible? Secondary amines are possible. Secondary alcohols are possible. Ethers, ketones are possible. No aldehydes, no proxylic acids. No primary amines or primary alcohols are possible. That is correct. Now, what are the applications of alcohols, ethers, um, aldehydes, ketones, and amines? What are the, what are the applications? So alcohols are used for the disinfectants. Ethers are used for the surgery, used to use. LDRs and ketones for pharmaceutical drugs. And amines are usually for the painkiller, painkiller. Can you say those again? Alcohol alcohols are disinfectants. Ethers are for the surgical purposes. And pharmaceutical drugs for the amines, uh, for, for the LDRs and ketones. And amines are usually for the analgesics, painkiller, painkiller. Next, we want the chiral molecules, right? What's the chiral molecule? Who can define the chiral molecules? A molecule is a chiral when a molecule is a chiral when your four atoms are grouped surrounded by central carbon atoms. And if you put a mirror image to that molecule, if you put a mirror in front of the molecule, you get the mirror image, and they are not superimposable. Therefore, they are stereo isomers. Yes or no? The stereo yeah. isomers. Yeah. And if you have a chiral molecules and if you pass a plain polarized light, you see, you see some deflection of the light. If the light is deflected on the right, what configuration of the molecule? What is the configuration of the molecule? If, if the light balance. deflects to the left, it's L configuration, and if it deflects to the right, it's D configuration? That is correct. That is absolutely right. One is called dextra rotatory for D and liver rotatory for L. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. What is the general principle of a molecule to be L or D or L? What's the general principle? How, how do you know if you, if, you, if you do not have the machine, how, do, how can you tell by looking at the structure of the molecule? Whether it is a D configuration or L configuration. Yes? Usually by look at the those atoms surrounded by the central carbon atoms. And the atom with a higher atomic number, if it is in the left, it's L configuration. If it is in the right, and it's a D configuration. Okay? Then we talked about the cyclic compound, the sucrose, glucose. Yes? Can you explain again how you can tell if it's D or L configuration by just so, looking at it? So if you have a carbon, uh, carbon, so chiral carbon, you look at the atomic number of the atoms attached to the carbon. The atom with the highest atomic number, if that is on the left, that is L. 
if the atom or group in the high, on the uh, right hand side is a d is a d then we talked about the um, cyclic uh, the fisher projection formula and cyclic uh, uh, howard projection formula of sugars right what's the general formula of hydrocarbons uh, carbohydrates sorry what's the general formula of carbohydrates what is the general formula of carbohydrates yes c dot h2 o whole n n is greater than equals 3 on n equal 3 is a, a glyceraldehyde on n equal 4 those tetroses n equal 5 pentoses how many pentoses do you know how, how many pentoses you talked about do you know the pentoses d ribose and and D deoxyribose. D deoxyribose. What's the difference between D ribose and D deoxyribose? What's the difference? What's the difference? The D ribose has an OH and then the deoxyribose just has an H at the second carbon. C2 carbon. So C2. Yeah, that's, that's very nice. That means the C2 carbon in D deoxyribose is optically inactive. A chiral and a D ribose, it is a chiral center. That is very good. That's right. So now, when you have a um, line drawing of the glucose, fructose, mannose, galactose, what do you call that? What configuration is that? It's a Fischer projection formula, right? Yes. So if if you consider the glucose and fructose in a in a Howard projection formula, what are the what are the chiral? How many numbers of chiral centers are there? Number of chiral centers present in D glucose and fructose in Howard's projection formula and Fischer projection formula. Is it four? Uh, it's a four, four. Glucose is four uh, in a in a Howard's projection in a Fischer projection formula, and in Howard's projection formula. Five. Five, because C double bond O is a uh, chiral, and that is opened up uh, to make the anomers, alpha beta anomers. That's correct. What's the application of glucose? How do you determine the glucose level in our body from our, from our blood sample? So glucose is oxidized with the glucose oxidase in the C1 carbon with the glucose oxidase the molecular oxygen to make gluconic acid plus hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide then reacts with the color, colorless compound or the toluidine to make a color compound, which could be determined to determine the amount of glucose present in the blood. Right? Yes or no? All right, and what are the applications of monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides? And what are they? What are the difference between those molecules? Give me a minute or so, okay? Actually, my time is up 11.40, but still. Uh, no, we, we have a 10 minutes, right? Yes or no? Yeah, you still have 10 minutes. Yeah, we have plenty of time. So, so I'm sorry, I was hurrying up probably, basically. I thought it was 40. Yes. So, what what is the um, uh, what test do you use to make the uh, to determine the glucose level in the blood? What test do you use to determine the glucose level in the blood? Say it. I just explained. Say it. So, glucose is oxidized to the C one oxidation with the with the help of glucose oxidase to make, what molecule does it make? What are the molecules? Glucuronic acid. And? And hydrogen peroxide. That's right, so one to one. And hydrogen peroxide reacts with what molecule? Colorless molecule to make a color. Ortholuidine. Ortholuidine, ortholuidine, that is correct. And then you can determine what's the normal level of glucose usually we take. What's the normal level of glucose? 70 and 90. About 70 to 90. Right. Yeah, 130 and above is become a pre-diabetes. Yeah, right. Very good. So it has a very good application how to determine the glucose level. Absolutely right. Now, uh, when glucose or fructose, they make a cyclic compound, right? They polymerize. Uh, no, not, 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 they, they make a cyclic compound. And what type of molecule do they generate? So for example, glucose, Fischer projection formula, and it wants to make the Howard projection formula. What type of molecules do they make? Stereoisomers, 
Anomars or Epimars? Uh, they make Anomars. They make Anomars. Alpha and Beta are the two different Anomars. That is correct. So what are the Epimars then? Can you give an example of Epimars? Can you say what the Anomars were again? So Anomars on the glucose, for example, and then it, when it make a cyclic form, Howard Position formula, is C1 carbon, C dot bond rho, aldehyde group opened up, make a tetrahedral structure, triangular planar to tetrahedral structure. And then hydroxyl group could be on the up upward direction in a C1 carbon, and hydroxyl group would be downward directions. Depending on upward or directions or downward directions, it is called beta D glucose and alpha D glucose. Those are the anomars. Anomars are in the same carbon to different configurations. And epimars, what's the epimars? What's the epimars? What's the epimars? Epimars are two different molecules, not the same molecule. And having is a- Is it D mannose and D glucose? That is correct. And what type of epimars are those? What's the relationship between D glucose and D mannose? You're right, yes. I mean, which two? Two. Yes, 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 yes. C2, the C2 configurations are different in those two molecules. And what's the relationship between glucose and galactose? Four. Four epimers, four carbon That's correct. Very good. Now, what are the disaccharides? How many can you give us an example? So, monosaccharides are the one single molecule, glucose, one sugar, sugar molecule. Disaccharides are two different uh, monosaccharides are joined together. Give an example. Give me an Give me some example. Uh, lactose. lactose, sucrose, maltose, cellu cellulobios. Yeah, cellulobios. And what's the what's the chemical uh, linkage of the of the of the lactose? Lactose and uh, glucose. Galactose, galactose first. Galactose, okay. galactose, and uh, beta one four. Glucose. That is correct. And sucrose. Uh, glucose and fructose. Glucose alpha one two fructose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you can see the linkages, yes. And maltose is glucose 1, 4. Uh, yes, Julia, glucose 1, 4 uh, glucose and uh, alpha 1, 4 glucose. And the uh, cellulose is glucose beta 1, 4 glucose. That's correct. So if the maltose polymerized to make what? What does it make when it is polymerized? Make a polysaccharide. What's the name of the polysaccharide? Cellulose. Uh, cellulose is the cellulose. When cellulose is polymerized to make a cellulose, and that is a gly glycogen or starch. Glycogen for animals, plants, starch for the plants. That's correct. And what's the what's the role of glycogen and starch in our uh, in in a, in a living creature? The storage foods. The storage foods. How about a cellulose? Cellulose is for structural and protection, like a bark of the tree, stems, roots, leaves, grass, etc., etc., right? And what are the applications of monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides? What are the applications of monosaccharides? Yes? Monosaccharides are, are metabolic fuels. Remember the glycolysis we talked about? We started the glycolysis, we did not go further. Remember? So this is metabolic fuels. How about the disaccharides? Some disaccharides are metabolic fuels, like a sucrose, galactose, maltose in some extent, but the cellulose is not. Cellulose is not, because we cannot digest the cellulose. And those maltose and cellulose, they can make polymers. So some of them are food particles, some of them are like polymers. And what are those um, oligo, uh, what's the applications of oligosaccharides? Anyone? Applications of oligosaccharides. 
they have a sugar or modified sugar, three or more. Three or more monosaccharides join together to make oligosaccharides. What's the application of oligosaccharides? General application. Uh, antibiotics. That is correct. And what's the general applications of the polysaccharides? Storage food or structural? Storage food, structural and protections. All right, that is correct. That's, that's very good. So these are the things. I have a 40 questions. And that's basically I have. I don't. I hope I do not go too fast. If you have any questions, I have only a few more minutes. Ask me. But I'll be here for as long as you want. Uh, do you have any questions? That many questions I have. I have 40 questions. Uh, 110 points. 100 points is your original points, and 10 points is the bonus. And um, you'll have a, you know, the same amount of time. You can take 90 minutes if you want for this time. We can give a little bit extra time if you need. And the students with the SAS, they'll have a exam uh, one hour earlier. And definitely, uh, if you do not get your answer by 10 o'clock, the SAS students and then send me email. I have the list and I'm going to send you, uh, I'll try to send it about, let's say, 9, uh, nine o'clock, nine, no, 10 o'clock, before 9.50, 9.45, 50 or something like that. If you don't receive by 10 o'clock, send me email. I, I usually I have the list, but if I forget, please remind me. You must get it before 10, okay? And the rest of them will get it uh, by uh, uh, by uh, 11 o'clock or 10 for 10 for your five or 10:50, okay? So you okay. said that we could use up to 90 minutes, so we could turn in at like 12:20. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, I'll give you 20 minutes. I'll give you 90 minutes as of now. If you need it. If you need it, just let me know at the time that I, I still we still need a time, and I monitor it. I'll ask a question periodically, and if you send me chat side or what, how, how, whatever it is, if I get uh, some response that you need time, sure, I'll give you up to 90 